Hello, I'm Gus Lorenz, Extension Entomologist for the University of Arkansas System Division of Agriculture. And uh, we're here today in Tiller, Arkansas, and we're looking at, we're evaluating our thrips plots. So I've got uh, Ben Thrash here on my right and Nick Bateman on my left. And we're here today evaluating thrips uh, damage with various treatments. And, and we've got just about every kind of treatment out here that you can imagine. And we're gonna show you the degree of, of control that we're seeing out here based on those products. But when it comes to thrips, you know, they're, they're probably one of the more important insect pests for us. Although they're very small, they can cause a lot of damage, which can equate to delays in maturity, uh, yield loss, all those kind of things they get the when the cotton is stunted uh, it gets off to a slow start so you don't get the the size and the coverage of the ground that you want to protect from from weed infestation and that kind of thing so they play a very important role and it's important for our growers to be able to control these pests uh, to the best of their ability to, to get the cotton off to a good start so just to give you an idea of the damage that thrips can cause what you see here is this puckering on the leaf, they call it rugosity, and that's caused by the thrips feeding. And it's, thrips are interesting in the fact that they're the only insect that has asymmetrical mouth parts. So one mandible is vestigial and it rasps on the leaf tissue and then it sucks the juice out from that plant which causes that uneven appearance and causes the plant to be uneven and have wrinkles on it like that. When feeding is severe, it'll cause a stunning of the nodes. You'll see a, the nodes are stacked. And then occasionally out here in the worst plots, uh, they actually killed the plants. So these are some plants that we've pulled out of our thrips plots. And believe it or not, these are all from the same planting date and they have a range of treatments on them. You can see this biggest plant up here had a, had a uh, out of carb uh, in furrow treatment whereas this dead plant down here on the end this is out of our untreated check and you can see uh, the range of treatments uh, in between that you can see how healthy and tall this plant looks uh, there's no stacking of the nodes however when the treatments start getting less and less effective you'll start seeing that stacking of the nodes in the top of the plant you also start seeing this leaf, this cupping of the leaves. You see it gets progressively worse as the treatments are, uh, are less and less effective. Now these plots were, uh, they had about 160 thrips per five plants, which is some pretty extreme uh, thrips pressure. So this plant would be rated as, you know, I wouldn't quite say a zero, uh, but maybe like a, a 0.5 or something. Whereas down here on the end, this is a dead plant and that would be uh, considered a five on a rating scale. So we're gonna quickly go through how we pull our thrip samples from the field. So the critical time to, to pull your thrip samples to check for thrips in the field would be between the first tree leaf and third tree leaf emerging. Uh, but as you can see behind me, the way we do it is we have alcohol jars and what we're gonna do is pull five, five plants Per plot and as soon as we cut that plant off at the soil level we're going to put that immediately into an alcohol jar and so it's critical too to remember where your shadow is if your shadow crosses those plants those thrips are are prone to fly off so you want to keep your shadow off the throw that you're uh, sampling but after we pulled our five plants we'll put the lid back on the alcohol jar give it a quick shake and we'll carry it back to the lab where we have a series of uh, of washing that we do to to actually get a count of the thrips Hi, I'm Nikki Talon, University of Arkansas System Division of Agriculture. I work with Gus Lorenz in the entomology department, and this is Taylor Harris. She's um, my lab assistant, works with me in the summers, going to college. She's been here for about three years now. One of the main things that we do this time of year is wash samples of thrips when the guys bring them in from the field so that we can determine how many thrips are in each plot and the efficacy of the different treatments that we've, that we've put out. Um, this particular one is a regional test that we do uh, among, across several states. 
It's a regional test, so you can see where we number each plot on the lid, and this will stay with the sample until it's been counted and documented. And we take them through this washing process, and we double check that they've pulled five plants per sample. You can see Taylor washing those there. And we get a little system going where we filter several at a time because we get quite a few. Sometimes the guys will get four plants or they'll get six plants and we'll have to do a little bit of math to equate it to five plants so that we're comparing the same thing. So these are just regular coffee filters that you buy at the grocery store. We get quite a few. And then this one's filtered already and it's ready to be washed into a Petri dish. So we take that out, carefully unfold it. And then gently wash everything into the Petri dish. And at this point, we can get a small set of tweezers to pull any large leaf debris out because it gets pretty big under the microscope. And then we'll place that under the microscope. And we have a little clicker here that we use to help us count. Sometimes they get pretty thick. We've had years where we've had a couple hundred thrips in a petri dish. And then some years like last year we hardly had any. She's actually in an untreated check. The petri dishes are lined with grid with a grid on the bottom. And basically um, we start at this top corner and we come across and then we just loop our way back and forth and count in those grids. And that helps us keep up with where we've been. So she's counted 32 larvae and three adults. And the way she tells the difference between the two is the adults have a feathery wing. Um, and the immatures are cigar shaped and they're milky colored. Um, they clearly don't have any wings on them yet. So this will just um, help us determine which chemical treatments are working for the grower, um, which is going to give him the best bang for his buck, the best efficacy. Thrips control can be difficult for our growers. We're beginning to lose some efficacy with insecticide seed treatments. A lot of growers aren't set up to put in furrows in. Uh, and then when you have to make a foliar application, a lot of times the weather can disturb the growers getting it out. Uh, you know, you can't put it out in rain, wet ground. It makes it very difficult. Imagine a technology that will provide thrips control from the time that seed comes out of the ground. We're evaluating a, a product called Thrive On Technology from Bayer. And this, this is a, a product, it's much like, a, it's a BT trait, kind of like Bogard 2 or Bogard 3. And this technology provides control of thrips and plant bugs. So there's a lot of value to this new technology. And, and if you look close between this row here that is, uh, regular cotton, conventional cotton, you can see that it's been affected by the thrips. You see the puckering on the leaves, the growth isn't great. And then the next row over, the cotton looks so much better over here, entire leaf, 
it looks uh, amazingly better. And we've helped with the with the development of this technology from the time it came uh, into being. Uh, we've screened lines with the company and got it to this point where this product should be coming to market in the next year or two. Today we're at Lawn Man Cotton Research Station uh, and we're evaluating the most important insect pest of cotton, which is the tarnished plant bug. We're in the field that we call wire pen and, and the reason that we do our plant bug research here at the station at Mariana is if you look around the field, what you'll see is corn on, on two or three sides of us and, and back there is Crowley's Ridge. And this is just an excellent habitat for tarnished plant bugs and it gives us the opportunity to evaluate uh, insecticides and, and traits that are now coming on the market that, that will be in the immediate future. It gives us a chance to evaluate these, these different technologies. So the typical plot here is about six rows by 50 feet and we have probably over 300, 400 plots in this, in this field. And we evaluate by taking two shake sheet samples per plot and counting the number of plant bugs. After an application, we come out three, seven, 10, 14 days after application. And then we count plant bugs using this shake sheet method. And this is the preferred method that our growers, our consultants use when they want to evaluate plant bug control in their plots. So this is pretty typical of what we would do in, the, in any field. So when we sample for plant bugs, we walk into the plot and we try to get our shake sheet and we'll slide it underneath the plants and try not to disturb them before we get ready for our, for our shakes. And what we do is we get all the cotton within the length of this drop cloth and we'll bend it over and, uh, and shake it. So all the plants within that two and a half foot uh, length of this drop cloth, we bend them over and then we shake them. And you wanna shake them pretty vigorously, but you wanna shake it and don't break it. An important thing is you don't wanna actually slap the cotton on the drop cloth, you wanna shake it above the drop cloth because if you start slapping it against the actual drop cloth, then you're starting to smash some of those really small plant bugs and you're also knocking them off of the, off of the, uh, the sheet. And so if you come up here close, you can see, see some of these plant bug nymphs. See, there's one, there's one. And what I'm doing is I'm smashing them as I go along. So I'm making sure I don't uh, count them twice and you can see them crawling around here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I, I usually go pretty quick and I, and I catch any of the nymphs that are trying to escape off the drop cloth. And uh, once I do a quick count kind of on that, I grab the other side and I shake it. And then I bend that cotton back and see here's an adult right there they escape pretty quick. So those are the first ones I try to count. And then I start moving on to my nymphs. And an important thing to do is after you get done counting all your easy nymphs that are running around on the drop cloth, you need to go through all this trash, all the blooms and squares and leaves that fall off. And I like to throw them against the, or throw them against the cloth and then toss them off. Because a lot of times plant bugs will hide underneath that bract or hide up in that bloom. And so it's important to take your time and look for, look for those plant bugs because a lot of times they'll be first instar nymphs and they are extremely small and it takes a little time for them to start to move where you can actually uh, see them. So you can see some of these early instar nymphs running around and those are the ones that a lot of people have trouble seeing. They'll also get them confused with thrips and aphids, but uh, these plant bugs actually move pretty quick compared to an aphid. An aphid a lot of times will just, just sit there. Uh, here's some, a bigger instar nymph. Those are the ones that are easy to see. See it running up my arm. And that's a clouded plant bug nymph. 
And what's important on them is that we count those as one and a half tarnished plant bugs. They're actually a little easier to control than tarnished plant bug. However, they cause more damage. So we count those as one and a half plant bugs. And you can tell them they've got a elongated body. It's longer than a plant bug nymph. And if you look, an easy uh, characteristic to key in on is the striped antenna that they have. And they have a they have a uh, elbow in their antennae at that first segment, which enables you to uh, kind of distinguish them from a tarnished plant bug. But there's a lot of things on a drop cloth that that people, when they they're starting to scout, will uh, get confused with a uh, with a plant bug. There's little bitty spiders that people will get confused. Little bitty beetles. Uh, they'll get confused with some lady beetle larvae, and uh, you know so. Getting a little training is, is very important whenever you're scouting for plant bugs. So a few of the other ways we can assess uh, the amount of damage we have going on with tarnished plant bug, and if they're present in the field, just looking at, at the different fruiting structures. So, you know, we can look at blooms, right? And this is a healthy bloom. You don't see a lot of black. It looks healthy. It's not stunted compared to one that tarnished plant bugs have fed on. You can see how stunted it is. You can see the black in there on the anthers. Uh, from where that, that proboscis has gone in and fed, as well as looking at squares. You know, we got a healthy square here uh, where tarnished plant bugs haven't been feeding on it, whereas you can look at this other square beside it here. You can see if you puncture wounds, you can see that yellow up there at the top. If you bust it open, it'll be black on the inside. Uh, and the important thing with squares too is to remember we can do a square retention count where we're counting that third square position from the top, uh, that third node and uh, we want to stay above 80% there. So that's a good way to tell if we're getting good control with tarnished plant bugs. And once the plant progresses quite a bit and we start having good bowl set up into the top of the plant, uh, we can start looking at bowl damage. And you can see that cat facing, all those puncture wounds on the outside of that bowl compared to a good healthy bowl. Uh, a lot of times whenever that feeding occurs, those, those plant bugs will get in there to, uh, to that lint. They can cause damage there as well and our threshold for uh, bowl damage is 20%. So anything over 20%, we're gonna treat. With plant bugs, it's a constant reevaluation of, of all the insecticides that are currently labeled and looking at these new products to see which products provide the best level of control for our producers. You know, we're averaging four to five applications in Arkansas for tarnished plant bug. So they are a major pest and a, and, a, and a major cost to our producers. So maintaining that level of control that pr pr maintains, uh, maximizes yield potential is, is extremely important to our growers.